One of the problems of mobile networks is that the terminal can be anywhere at any given moment. How to reach the terminal, send it a packet wherever it is, without the terminal consuming too much energy by a frequent exchange of messages? That is the question we are going to answer in this video. We know that a mobile network is composed of a set of cells. Base stations are set up in a regular pattern on the territory to offer good coverage. In 4G, a base station is called an inad B. We'll look at a very simple model with square cells that will enable us to make a few simple calculations in order to understand the main phenomena. The patterns we'll uncover are valid for more complex models, for example, with the model where we use hexagonal cells, which is what is usually used in the literature. The terminal, as I said, can be anywhere at any time in any cell. If someone wants to reach it, how do we establish a link to wherever it is? Well, the first idea that comes to mind is to consider the principle of updating location. If we consider a terminal that's on the move, each time it changed cell, it could send a message to the network saying, now I'm in this cell, send my packets to this in a B. If we look a bit at what this entails, the first thing is that the terminal must be able to detect a change of cells. To do this, we have the concept of a beacon channel. What is a beacon channel, also called broadcast control channel? It's that each inner B broadcasts its identity regularly on a radio frequency, typically every one to five seconds. We have, for example, here, inode B, B1, which broadcasts its identity B1, B2 for the other, and B3. This way, a cell phone that goes from one cell to another just needs to listen to the beacon channels. When it receives a signal from B2 stronger than from B1, that indicates it has changed cells. Now, let's look at how many location updates are made in a simple case. We know that in urban zones, the operator deploys a large number of base stations per square kilometer, which means that each cell is small. We could, for example, imagine that in a very dense zone, a cell is 600 meters long. If we take a pedestrian who is moving at 3.6 kilometer per hour that comes down to a speed of one meter per second and it will cover the distance of 600 meters in 600 seconds. Now, let's suppose that he is in his car. Now the speed will be closer to 36 kilometers per hour or 10 meters per second. At this point, 600 meters is covered in 60 seconds. That means that every minute, the terminal has to update its location, since on average, it changes cells every minute. If every minute, even if I'm not using my terminal, it updates its location. 
it's going to transmit and receive messages from the base station. And it's going to consume energy, even though I'm not doing anything. At the end of the day, my battery will be dead, perhaps before the end of the day. So, we are going to try to reduce the frequency of the location updates. To do so, we'll group some cells in what is called a tracking area, or TA. It was known as the location area in 2G or 3G. Now, each base station, instead of broadcasting its identity, broadcasts the identity of the tracking area. This identity is made up of a mobile country code, a mobile network code, and a tracking area code. A code allocated by the operator. How does this work? The terminal still listens to the beacon channel. If it's coming, for example, from base station B10, when it enters zone TA1, it will detect a base station broadcasting a code that is different from the previous one. The terminal detects the change of tracking area. It will update its location, saying I'm in TA1 and not I'm in cell X. This means that when the cell phone moves and goes into a different cell, well, it does nothing. It doesn't send a signaling message. Now, it can go anywhere in the tracking area. It's always the same. Nothing happens. As long as the cell phone does not cross the boundary of the tracking area, it does not update its location. Let's look at what that enables us to do. We no longer have areas that are 600 meters long. We now have zones that are 1,800 meters long. We take terminals that move on a straight line. Instead of updating every minute, we have an update every three minutes. Since in three minutes, we will have covered for a terminal at 10 meters a second, the 1800 meters. We have nine cells in the tracking area. And we've divided the average number of location updates that we do by three, which is the square root of nine. You can see that now the network no longer knows in which cell the terminal is located at each time. It only knows the tracking area. That means that if there was an update at a given moment, maybe at the moment you want to reach the terminal, it's in a different cell. So, when you try to reach the terminal, you have to broadcast its identity to all the cells of the tracking area. Here, you can see that we have multiplied by nine the number of messages that are sent to try to reach a terminal. The principle of broadcasting the same message to several cells is called paging. Paging consists in broadcasting the identity, the TMC, temporary mobile subscriber identity, to all cells of the tracking area. In conclusion, a tracking area regroups several cells. A UE 
can move within the tracking area without updating its location. The larger the area, the fewer location updates we have to do. However, there will be more paging messages to send. At first approximation, a tracking area of n cells allows you to divide the number of updates made per unit of time by the root of n. The number of paging messages is multiplied by n.